So, Peter, um, there's there's a, there's a lot of comparison going on right now yeah. between the current economic climate and, and what happened on March 12th, where the Dow Jones Industrial and basically the entire New York Stock Exchange dropped 30% in a single day. There's a lot of comparing that to September 29, uh, 2008, right now. What uh, from from your experience, what did what did it feel like? as the stock market crash of 2008 spread into the real estate industry in Cincinnati? So um, it felt just as bad, right? It was horrible. And uh, there was fear for sure, just as there's fear now. Um, I think the big difference is that in real estate, we, there were a lot of people who kind of felt like it wasn't going to impact real estate as much as it did. There was, um, there was two things are different. One is um, the economic fundamentals of what's happening right now versus the economic fundamentals of 2008. And the other is, I think, kind of the emotional mindset of consumers and investors now versus the mindset back then. And when I say that, I'll start with the mindset first. Um, there was so much greed going on uh, in that peak of 2005, 2006, tapering off into 2007 before that, that crash. And that greed was, was fostered by Main Street, right? When, when, when in DC, they allowed, they allowed Wall Street to chop up mortgages in terms of securities and sell them to, to like, you know, insurance companies in Finland, there was this amazing opportunity to package bad loans with good ones and sell them overseas. And so that enabled us to, unfortunately, enabled... Um, the, the lending world to loosen up the criteria to qualify for a loan to the point where we had even things called liar loans, which were basically no doc loans, which means you basically said, my name is Peter. Here's my social security number. I make hundred thousand dollars a year. You write on a napkin and you can get a mortgage for 300 grand. I mean, it was crazy. So um, that greed generated by wall street, once they were allowed to uh, commoditize these things, chop them up and commoditize them, trickle down to main street. And then consumers, everyday consumers started getting greedy. And then it became a game of hot potato, right? And people were, um, just writing contracts on, on condominium projects and selling the paper, selling the contract to somebody else who would sell it to somebody else. So there's a ton of greed going on in, in, our, in, our, in our industry and in, in America in general back then. The interesting thing about now is that, number one, enough of us, enough of us remember what that was like. Uh, and number two, the economic fundamentals of the residential real estate industry are strong, were strong up until three weeks ago. Um, the measure, the measures of, of a healthy, or the measures, the, the, the factors, the economic um, factors of the residential real estate industry are inflation and interest rates and GDP expansion and real income growth. And all of those fundamentals were strong, are strong up until three weeks ago. So, I think because this happened so rapidly and because some, enough of us remember what it was like in 2008, I think people are more afraid than they were before. And I think there was a little bit more denial going on uh, back in 2008. If you could please speak a little more, Peter, to uh, the comparison between what we're experiencing right now and what was experienced in the fourth quarter of 2008. It's hard because this is, this is, happening real time, right? So it's, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to make comparisons to yeah. a three month time period versus this three weeks that we've experienced so far. Um, the interesting thing is that right now, if I point to all of the um, kind of the lag indicators of the residential real estate market, which is sales, um, we're still doing great. As you know, our sales team has had one of our best months ever. We sold 10 houses in the last seven days, several of them in multiple offers. I mean, you would think that we're in this robust economic environment, but a sale is a lead indicator, a, a lag indicator. There's some lead indicators that have to happen first, which is someone has to raise their hand and say, I'm interested in real estate, get qualified and choose to enter the market of the moment. And what we're seeing right now that we can't see until more time evolves is how much that has shrunk over the last three weeks. As you know, Slocum, our, our team's conversion rate is about 4%, meaning on average, every 20 to 25 people we talk to, one of them will agree to work with us to purchase or sell or invest in real estate. In the last three weeks, that has dropped down to 1.2%. And 
And so that's a lead indicator of future demand. So we've got to be able to look at what the lead indicators are. And those are pointing to a pretty steep drop off in activity. Um, if you look at Keller Williams aggregate data, which is pre representation representational of the world of the country, right? We, we are the largest brokerage in the country. Um, new appointments are down 50%. So we know that in the next two to three months, we should see activity drop by at least 50% um, in Cincinnati and in the country in general. And, and that, by the you way, know, is you, a steeper drop than 2008, was my point. Yeah, so when do the lag indicators of actual uh, listings going on the market and pending and selling, when do those lag indicators really come into effect? Okay. So it, you cut out for a little bit there, but I think the question was, when do we see the lag indicators show up? Uh, or when do we see these lead indicators show up and what the, what actually the economy of the industry is doing? So real estate is a 90 day business. So from the time somebody says I'm interested in, uh, in, I have a real estate need to the time you meet with them, educate them, transact, close 90 days on average in a hot market. It can be as little as, as 45 to 60 days. Um, so we are, three weeks into this, I think we're probably going to see, there's two things going on. Uh, we'll probably start seeing demand wane pretty seriously, which for the investors listening to this is kind of where their ears are going to perk up a little bit. We should start seeing demand wane for consumers in the next two to three weeks at the outside. Uh, and that's when prices should start to come down. If you think about the market of the moment from an investor's perspective, or just from the whole industry, we were experiencing a hot market in fact, Cincinnati was experiencing the most acute seller's market it's ever seen during the first quarter of this year. Never been hotter. And so uh, absorption rates were incredibly low. More than half of our inventory was selling in multiple offers. Like it was hot. So um, while, while the coronavirus has become a thing and is definitely preventing new entrants or reducing the number of new entrants into the market, there are still all those people that sold during January and February who hadn't found a new home yet. They're motivated buyers. Uh, and they're going to buy over the next week to three weeks. And then all these lead indicators that are not showing up is going to show up in the market. So I would say really by, by the 15th of April, and I, I should never prognosticate because that's the fastest way to look dumb is try and tell people what's going to happen in the future. Um, but I think probably mid April, we'll start seeing buyer activity wane significantly. And I think we're going to see corresponding shifts in prices. If I'm, if I'm struggling to get that work, work done and, and I'm thinking, uh, what is my window of opportunity to get my house on the market and get a good buyer and get it sold? So I'm gonna repeat the question because you were lagging a little bit there. Thanks. If you're flipping a property right now and you're not quite done, what's your window of opportunity to get it sold, find a buyer and, and lock in your return a week? I, wow. would, I would say, uh, depending on the price point, right? Because there, there are segments of this market that were already had, have softened significantly. There's segment, segments that are still white hot um, or, or warmer. If you're south of, if you're first time buyer inventory, probably two to three weeks. If you are trade up inventory, you got like a week, 10 days. And I think we're going to start seeing this really, really hit hard. Um, that's, that's really, is, that window of opportunity, let me just say it simply, the lower your price point, the longer your window of opportunity. There will always be buyers and sellers in every single market segment, but we're going to see them contract by at least 50%, probably more as the price range increases. Because if you think about how a consumer buys, a lot of how a consumer buys is based on confidence. And when you start ticking up north of like $300,000, and especially over half a million, which is considered luxury inventory in Cincinnati, um, a lot of a consumer's confidence is derived in their net worth. And a lot of the average consumers have their net worth tied to what the market's doing. So if the markets have dropped 30%, you've got this huge shrinking in confidence. You're going to see the higher the price point, the faster it gets soft. And, and by the way, if you can't push this thing out the door in the next week, I'd be figuring out what are the cosmetic things you can do and have the offering at the price that you want and just offer and just say like the roof will go on and be done by the time we close. Like 
don't wait on that stuff. Get the cosmetic stuff done that needs to be done in order to get consumers through so you can get, you can get a sale and finish on the back end and just make that work a, a contingency to the contract that the buyers can review and approve. 